You guys asked for it, so we're gonna try it out. How strong is laser welding? So we're gonna take it, put it through its paces, and do some pressure testing on an aluminum box. We're trying it again. We're doing a little bit of experimenting with laser welding, but this time we're in Kansas City at Everlast R&D Lab, where Jesse here works on the Red Sabre line and all the laser welding R&D that you do on different metals and stuff. What are we gonna do today? So my background is a lot of automotive performance. So I've built a lot of aluminum coolant tanks, intercoolers, catch cans, things like that. So I know a lot about pressurized aluminum boxes. So being that's my expertise, we've got ourselves a little fitting here. We've got some plates cut out for a tank. We're gonna laser weld it up and we're gonna put pressure to it till she blows. So one of the problems I've always seen is getting a welder trained on how to build a nice solid. Aluminum can be tricky. To it can be real it. tricky. Yeah, there's some black magic to it sometimes. So <laughs> training someone to not only weld aesthetically, but also have the strength to take pressure, um, especially on an aluminum box like this, it can, uh, it can be difficult. So I think that's one place where the laser can really start helping companies out, getting people up to speed faster on making high quality aluminum welds. And that's one thing we're gonna show here today. I think Austin and I are gonna split up the box. Oh yeah, I'm gonna each weld, weld a little yeah, bit of it. Weld, I gotta get my Each weld about it. half of it and we'll see uh, which side, which side makes it, which side doesn't, huh? <laughs> let's do it. So let's get started. We'll, uh, we'll set up the laser. We'll uh, show you guys some of the parameters and how we're gonna set this up. And then we'll, uh, we'll get started burning with some light. Let's do it, let's go, let's go, let's go. So here's your main control for the laser power unit itself. So we, we're obviously in laser welding mode. So you have your basic parameters, enable and disable. When you go to set the gun down, you can turn the laser off. You can show either a, a line or a dot for your pilot laser, the yeah, little red that. line. Yep. yep. So we can change that to line or dot. And we have a continuous or a spot or pulse welding mode as well. So we'll leave that on continuous for now. Then here we have all of our basic settings. So our frequency, just how fast the laser's scanning back and forth. We're at 100% duty cycle, even at 1500 watts. And we're running a four millimeter wide bead. So we got our setup. Uh, let's get into maybe tacking this stuff together. Okay, perfect. So using this bigger wire, that's why we're going to use for this outside corner joint. Yeah, and I found really 045 or 047, 364. Um, even for like aluminum MIG, you know, you can go down pretty thin. And the feed rate is so much slower on the laser that uh, the bigger wire, especially for aluminum, you get such a higher deposition rate. It really helps to control the heat. I don't want to put my fingers next to your laser. I don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> now we got a, a tip on there. It's specifically made for the outside corner joint. Yeah, so this thing, it just kind of saddles the outside corner. Mm. So again, that's part of why the laser welding is so much easier. You're not counting on an air gap, you know, an arc length. You're literally just laying the tip down right on the material, dragging it along and it keeps it nice and centered. Y'all got all kinds of tips, some for like, yeah, outside corners, fillets, um, dual wire feed tips. So yeah, we've got a, a tip for pretty much every situation you're gonna find yourself in. Of course, cleaning and everything too. And cutting, which a lot of the, a lot of the lasers on the market that are welding don't cut, and this one will cut. Oh yeah, that cutting tip, I definitely wanna see that. It's so quiet, it's so much better than <laughs> This thing is tacking it together quick, dude. I'm pretty excited to weld it. Super casual. Nice and mellow. No noise, we can actually talk while we're welding. We're gonna try to send it to the moon <laughs> out in the back parking lot. For the sake of ease, weldability, training, you know, this was pick up and go there. I mean, aesthetically, we've got some really nice looking welds. We've got so a couple spots where uh, 
I think yeah, our fit up was hurting us. Yeah, that was really nice. But there's like three or four runs in there that you'd be hard pressed to uh, not think they were TIG like this run right oh, here. Yeah. A lot of our coolant tanks, we would test to 15, 17, 20 PSI. We'll start at 15 PSI. We'll do, uh, I've got some leak tester. We'll go around the seams. If everything's sealed up, then I say we, uh, we take it out to the back parking lot. We crank up the air compressor and we, we see what it takes. See if we can split it. Yeah. See if we can make ourselves a little uh, improvised explosive. <laughs> <laughs> So we should see bubbles, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I'm not seeing any leaks, dude. All right, so we've got it all hooked up. We're, we're in an empty parking lot. How many pounds of PSI we got in that little compressor? We've got 140 possible. All right, all right, let's see if we can't put it all in there, huh? Yeah, we tried 20. So now we're at, we're at 20. We're going to 40. Going to 60. Got 80. Oh, she's bubbling. She's falling she's, over. She's ballooning. That's 100 PSI. That's 125 PSI. What kind of what kind of pressure would you need this for? For a coolant tank, no. For an intercooler, though, like on a like a pull-in truck or something like that, it's pretty common to see boost pressures upwards of 120, 130 PSI. That's all the way up? That's uh Oh, wait, oh, more. That's 130. 100, 135 PSI. Let's see if it holds. It's ballooning up, but it's not popping. That's pretty awesome. Well, that's it, man. It, it did the damn thing. I think that's a... I think that's a win for the Red Saber, um, if I do say so myself. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had talked about it kind of uh, behind the scenes, but I was, I was actually really surprised that it held that much pressure. I was. I had all the confidence in the world. I was fully, fully prepared. I well, said, I, mean, I saw I'm, it. I'm working with a first-time laser aluminum welder, so. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good point, though. Still a good yeah. point, man. I mean, because that's the thing is, uh, even like TIG welding that, like I would have, if I would have TIG welded that and we said, hey, let's put 130 to it, I wouldn't stand next to it. But I it, uh, thought it was going to take off, but it didn't, man. Hey, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this, uh, this type of content. Jesse, I appreciate you no, letting man. me come out here and do this type of Absolute stuff. Absolute honor this to have you guys by. Blast. A lot of firsts today, but the proof is in the pudding. Laser welding is pretty stinking strong, and it can hold, stack up to the pressure. So we'll see you on the next weld.